completing your buckram torso mount. Materials. You will need a hot glue gun and glue sticks, scissors, surgical scissors are optional, a box cutter, straight needles and curved quilting needles, batting or polyfelt, cotton or polyester stockinette, a quarter yard of cotton muslin or flannel for finishing the neck cap, sewing thread and DMC cotton embroidery floss, an ethafoam carving knife, a pencil and a sharpie, and the ethafoam block provided in your course kit. Technique. The first step in finishing your torso is to remove the cast form from the torso. Start by marking the center back of your buckram torso with a pencil. Next, you're going to mark your cutting lines. We are going to cut the center back in a toothed or dental pattern to allow us to interweave the back and be able to better control the size of the finished mount. You are going to mark one and a half inches from either side of the center back and one inch down. I'm creating a rough grid pattern with my pencil. I will later trace the actual cutting lines using a sharpie. Use a sharpie to trace your dental pattern along the grid lines that you've just marked. Continue marking all the way down from the neck to the bottom of your buckram torso mount. Turn the cast off the form. You're going to begin by scoring along your lines with a box cutter. I am using an adjustable height blade so that I don't penetrate too deeply too quickly. You may need to pass over each line two to three times to make sure that you've scored through all the layers of buckram. If you're working with a fiberglass mount and you want to make sure that you don't nick or cut the surface, you may want to use surgical scissors to cut these toothed shapes. Surgical scissors have a short blade with a wide turning angle and curved blunt edges that won't nick your mannequin. However, they are quite difficult to use and can, uh, you have to press quite hard in order to get through all the layers of buckram. <laughs>
I'm going to continue cutting with my box cutter. Since the torso form I'm using is quite inexpensive and made out of foam, a few nicks aren't going to matter. To release the cast form from the torso, begin by prying the tabs open. You may need to have a pair of scissors or a box cutter handy to release any small fibers that are still attached. Once the tabs are released, you can pry them out off of the torso form. It can take quite a bit of pulling in order to get the cast off of the torso form. The cast will remain a little bit flexible, so don't be afraid of breaking or cracking it while you're working to get it off of the polyurethane torso. Once the buckram cast is released, interlace the tabs to close the back of the mount. Make sure to check the measurements and adjust accordingly before gluing the tabs down. Glue the tabs down with hot melt glue. It helps to have an extra pair of hands here, but if you're working by yourself, you can use bulk dog clips or some small clamps in order to keep the tabs in place and while you, while you are gluing. Once you're done gluing the tabs down, your mount should look like this. Try to get the tabs as flat as possible. If you want, you can glue an additional strip of cotton muslin over the tabs to soften the sharp edges. Creating your torso base. Start by trimming the bottom edge of your buckram form so that, so that it is perfectly straight. Place your buckram form on your ethafoam plank and trace it with your Sharpie. Cut your ethafoam base. You may need to test this in your mount several times in order to find the correct angle of this disc. You want it to fit snugly inside of your torso form. This will help hold the, the show fabric taut with a minimal amount of glue later on in our mount making process. Continue trimming and testing. Do not glue the disc in to your buckram form at this time. We will glue it at the very end of our mount making process. Adding a felt layer. You are going to add a layer of poly felt or felt batting to your buckram mount. This is going to add just a light amount of padding and help to smooth out any small rough edges that might be remaining in your mount. Begin by draping your mount with your nonwoven felt or nonwoven poly batting. If you're using batting, you may want to separate the batting into, into two layers to, um, so that you can use a thinner material. Make sure to leave at least a, a two inch seam allowance at the bottom of the mount and a one inch seam allowance at the neck so that you have enough extra felt to fold under the raw edges. Slightly stretch and, or, and smooth the, the fabric over the surface of your mount
to make it as clean and taut as possible. It should grip slightly to the surface of the buckram. Once the material is smoothed over the mount, you can begin gluing. You're going to want to glue on each side. Trim the fabric so that the ends abut each other perfectly and begin gluing the edges down, smoothing and trimming as you go. If you need to dart the fabric, you may. Just make sure that the edges of the dart are perfectly abutted and smooth. Once your felt is on, the mount should look like this. The felt should be smooth and taut across the surface of the mount with no bumps or lumps. Check the sizing at this point to make sure that the mannequin isn't growing too much. Remember that you still need to add at least one layer of stockinette. I wasn't perfectly happy with the surface of this mount after I had finished the first felt layer. So I decided to add an additional layer to the top half of the mount to ensure that I would have a smooth surface when I went to finish the neckline. The neck is often the most challenging part of the mount to finish and it's important to keep the surface as smooth as possible throughout the mount making process. Here I've draped and stretched an additional layer of felt across the top. The shoulder line is stitched shut with a baseball stitch in DMC cotton floss. Loosely stitching a non-woven like felt is possible. You do not need to use a lot of tension and the result is that the seam is nearly invisible once the cover is put on the mount. For the neck, I've wrapped it in a strip of felt and I've used a herringbone stitch along the bottom of the neckline. I've also used herringbone stitch around the inside of the arm's eye, stretching the fabric slightly. This helps to keep tension across the surface and create a perfectly smooth uh, surface across the top of the chest. Once your mount is covered with felt, you can apply your stockinette cover. Simply roll it over the mount, but make sure to have at least two inches at the bottom edge and one inch at the top of the neck for finishing. The next step is finishing the shoulders. I am darting the shoulders to help the fabric conform to the curved shoulder and neck area. I simply folded it under. Try to keep the seam a little bit to the back so that when you're looking at the mannequin head on, the seams are not as apparent. You may trim away the excess fabric if you like and create a, a, a seam allowance with the raw edge. However, I find that this stockinette tends to be a little bit unwieldy, so I try to cut it as little as possible. Here I've pinned my seam in preparation for stitching. Begin stitching your shoulders. I'm using a curved quilting needle and DMC six stranded 100% cotton embroidery floss. I'm using a slip stitch. Although it may seem a little bit counterintuitive, the loosely woven DMC disappears completely um, in the stockinette. I find that when I use sewing thread, like sewing machine thread, to stitch cotton stockinette, it the hand tends to be a little bit too hard for the sort of light loftiness of the stockinette. And what, I, what you end up with is a seam that's almost too hard um, and shows um, quite a bit in the finished product. <laughs> 
Your finished shoulder line should look like this. I used green thread on the left side so that the stitches would be visible. The front should be smooth with minimal lumps around the neckline. Next we are going to finish the top edge of the neck. Finishing the neck is the, probably the most challenging part of the torso construction process. You are going to begin by carving a small etha foam plug that fits snugly inside of the neck hole. Pad the top of this piece of etha foam with at least three pieces of poly felt. Test this plug inside of your mount and trim the three layers of poly felt as close to the line of the neck edge as possible. Next, cut a circle of a woven such as muslin and place it over this cap. Remove the etha foam plug, the layers of felt, and the muslin from your mount. Wrap the muslin around the felt, pulling the edges tightly towards the bottom of the etha foam cap. You are going to stitch these in place with a curved needle and DMC floss. Do not try to glue this fabric down as the glue will not hold and you will not be able to maintain tension across the top surface of this neck piece. The top edge of your neck cap should look like this. Next, insert the cap into the neck hole. You can use a few drops of hot melt if you feel it is necessary, but the tension of the etha foam cap, the felt, and the muslin should keep it in place. Work the cap down into the neck hole. What we're looking to achieve here is a neck surface that is perfectly taut and perpendicular to the rest of the mount. The stockinette has quite a bit of give. Pull the edge of the stockinette up to meet the neck cap. What you're trying to create here is a small ridge that you can later stitch into to create a hard edge that will create a visual definition between the top of the neck and the rest of the torso. Once your neck cap is in place, you can begin stitching it. Tightly whip stitch the neck cap to the edge of that stockinette very tightly. What you're trying to do here is create a hard edge that you can then stitch into with your covering fabric. Once you've whip stitched the cap into place, the top of your mount should look like this. Note that I've built up the stockinette slightly, giving me a place to stitch into later. Here's another view. And here's the back view. Again, the shoulder seams should be slightly back and symmetrical, so they are not seen when the mount is viewed straight on. Next, we're going to prepare our show fabric for the top of the neck. Cut a woven fabric such as muslin or flannel to fit the top of the neck. Leave yourself at least a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Pin the circle in place turning the seam under as you go. It can be very difficult to stitch circles and having a large seam allowance helps in case you need a 32nd of an inch here or there. 
Once your circle is in place, it should look like this. Once your covering fabric is in place at the top of the neck, you can begin stitching it in place. For this process, I'm using a straight needle and thin sewing thread. Be sure to hide your tailor's tacks in the seam allowance of the fabric or under the show fabric of the mount. Begin stitching. Use the smallest stitches possible. I used extremely tiny whip stitches to attach the cap to the mount. Catching only one rib of the stockinette and one warp or weft yarn of the woven fabric at a time. Here's a very shaky close-up shot of the stitching. I was holding the camera in one hand, so I apologize for the waviness. But here you can see my needle trying to catch just one rib at a time and one warp or weft yarn. I pulled the sewing thread quite tightly to create a tight seam. Your finished neck cap seam should look like this. It should be clean, tight, and flat across the surface, and there should be a strong visual definition between the vertical surfaces on the mount and the top horizontal neck portion. Finishing neck is the most challenging portion of mount making. Unfortunately, it's also the portion of the mount that is often the most visible to viewers, so it's important to practice and get it right. Here is a side view of the finished neck and shoulder line. The final step in the mount making process is to finish the bottom of the torso. Gently pull the stockinette and the felt and tuck them into the inside of your torso mount. You can tack these in place with a little bit of hot melt, but, it, but you should be relying on the pressure of the uh, ether foam to hold all of these materials in place. If you like, you can also stitch these in place from the outside with a very thick chenille needle and uh, DMC cotton floss. However, the pressure from the ether foam should be sufficient to hold the cover in place. So here I'm wrapping them and tucking, using a tiny bit of glue to hold everything in place, and inserting the ether foam base into the torso mount. The base should fit snugly. You can use a few drops of hot melt just to keep everything in place. Once your base is secure, your torso mount is complete. You are ready for photography. Please photograph the front, back, right, left sides, and two 45 degree angle shots of your torso mount. Please make sure that your mount is photographed in front of a contrasting background so that the surfaces can be easily seen. I would also like to see a detail shot of the neck and the bottom of the mount. Thanks again, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.